To all my render, chain link, and ICP holders, I want you guys to please take the time to watch this video. You have to know what I'm going to tell you here today. You don't likely truly understand what you're holding. These three coins aren't just three regular rolled crypto old coins that you might just be fortunate enough to buy and make some good money in this bull run because, spoiler alert, I think definitely from today's prices at least, you're going to make some good money on financial advice. But what we have here is something much more special. I want to tell you about some of these amazing updates that have recently happened with these coins possible future announcements but most importantly at the very end i've got something you need to really listen to especially as i said if you are a holder let's not waste any more time let's get straight into it but of course as you should know by now look if you do find yourself learning something new in today's video or find it entertaining you can literally help support all i do which is very easy hit that like button that's literally all i ask for Matter of fact, maybe even hit that subscribe button, not so much for my benefit, but of course for yours, so that you can achieve all your crypto goals in this bull run. We have a lot to cover today, so I'm not going to be spending a lot of time on each individual area. If you were someone who I deem a good investor of any sort, crypto or traditional finance, you should do more research, especially if something on either one of these three coins sticks out to you the most. But again, the very end that I really want you to pay attention to here. So first of all, let's start off with a bull run cheat sheet. Okay, so guys, these three coins are very, very good. At least they're good in terms of the narratives that they're in for this bull run. I've of course subjectively ranked all the different narratives and if I come across over here, these are what they're pretty much primarily in, right? Render, don't get me wrong, only two AI and DP, but these are the two most powerful narratives besides meme coins of the bull run. Chainlinks, interoperability, tokenization, and Oracle. So these are all ranked nine and 10 out of 10s. And ICP has quite a few more but less powerful ones in the proof of work and storage narratives. If you're wondering what do these rankings mean, what do these colors mean, I basically rank them from eh, not so good performing narratives, like there won't be as much demand likely in these in terms of money invested in these altcoins for the bull run, and right up to like the 10 out of 10 ranked narratives that will likely see a lot of great gains in all of these altcoins. So most of these coins will do well. So first up, let's talk about Render. And I'm going to keep this quite short because I've covered Render quite a lot somewhat recently and nothing's really changed too much in Render's world, unlike the other two coins. I did just want to talk about it though and categorize this for those of you who haven't seen those videos, alrighty? So basically, Render in a nutshell has its ties or its fingers in Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Google to some degree, right? Varying depending on the company, but obviously this is the top four companies in the world, essentially, right? We all know these off the top of our heads. This is due to the fact that Atoy, the parent company of Render, Render itself was spawned from another company, Atoy, which has the same founder, okay? So there was Atoy, they needed to solve a problem of, well, decentralized GPU rendering, right? So they created the Render Network, or at least Jules Urbach did. They created the Render Network for a direct use case. And obviously in this case, we have a problem. Render's here to solve it. And it looks like it's going to have some pretty good, I believe, market penetration, right? So Brendan, Eric, Sam, and Ariel over here, I mean, massive people, right? Co-founder of Mozilla, ex of Google, ex of IBM, and Endeavor. Endeavor, by the way, mind you, is the founding, not the founding company, at least is the parent company of WWE and a few other large companies and brands, right? If we actually zoom out and have a look at this even more in depth, we can see here, again, they have their ties with NVIDIA, IBM, the WEF, the World Economic Forum, and this is sort of what we're dealing with over here, right? We have a lot of connections, guys, and even with like Morgan Stanley, for example, and Disney. I mean, in the world of a company in general, it's usually what who you know, not so much what you know, like technical ability. It's always the connections you can make. And in this case, like I've showed you many, many times, we've got great connections and great references from Google. You can see here, literally mentioning render by name is a game changer for ultra high resolution production and machine learning and da da da. So machine learning, you can kind of catch on AI a little bit there. And of course, a nice little one over here from Microsoft as well. We're thrilled to be part of a toy's new render network and deliver enterprise level hybrid GPU cloud rendering. This was from the NVIDIA GTC conference last year. This was very, very new. No one talks about this. I mean, only, what, 2,000 views on YouTube? So again, guys, look, I'm saying all this sort of stuff, and this will carry across to ICP and Tenlink as well. No one's talking about this. And what you have to understand is it's not spoken about now. This is how crypto works. And then all of a sudden, there'll be some massive push in terms of interest in crypto and AI, deep in whatever narratives. 
it'll come over to render and everyone will latch onto these ideas and take it to the moon. That's just how it works. It's all speculation based, but it's speculation based on what we can see right now. Genuinely good information. Over here, of course, Octane X was featured in Apple's keynote. This is again, well, this is back in May, a couple months old, but still information nevertheless. Also, uh, Syndica put this report out here recently for June, which shows that Render's node network is increasing. We can see here from 3,400 nodes, or should I really say back in January from 2,100 to already seven months later, 3,700. So it's gaining rapidly. One of the very few deep in networks, as we'll see mentioned here by ICP's founder, that are actually tangible, real, deep in AI projects, not snake oil projects, not vaporware, right? Also, Masari put this report out, which is very interesting to know, guys, because, of course, as you should know by now, if you hold Render, it transitioned from RNDR to RENDER, or Render, right? The token transfer because they moved officially from the Ethereum network over to the Solana network. And that was an interesting move because Solana actually has the highest number of deep in projects in crypto. Okay, so Render, of course, being part of this global infrastructure that is Solana, might actually have some benefits that we just don't know yet. Also, if we have a look at Luna Crush, guys, guess what? We're dealing with big numbers here in terms of the interactions. You should always have a look at this before buying a coin. The average interactions over the last six months, the bull run basically, for render is 2.1 million or 2.2 million per day, which is very good. That's quite uh, normal. So basically the rough ratio is if you have a billion market cap, you should have a million daily interactions. If you have a 2 billion market cap, you should have 2 million interactions. And it can fluctuate as you can see here, but that's steady, that's average. And that should be what we're looking for in this case. So overall, render takes a big, big tick in my opinion, and we'll get to the end here and explain more about what I'm talking about with render in a second. Next up, let's talk about Chainlink, okay? So Chainlink, of course, is an interesting project because somewhat recently, a few months ago, I think way back in maybe June, July of last year, so 12 months ago, uh, it basically offered this new product called the CCIP or cross-chain interoperability protocol, ushering this new age, I believe, of, of interoperability, right? Connecting the Web2 world, like these traditional finance ladies and gentlemen over here, to the crypto world, okay? All through CCIP. Now, this is important. We'll get back to this in a second because obviously it's not just an interoperability project. It's also an Oracle now offering tokenization as well. But either way, it allows these traditional finance bros and girls to have access to crypto and vice versa, which is very good for tokenization. It's also, of course, being part of the CCIP, connecting the different networks together. It's literally just a new uh, level of understanding, just like the internet, right? The, the TCP IP protocol that we all use every day without even realizing it. Basically, Chainlink's offering that sort of same thing, but except for crypto, allowing new applications to be built on top of it leveraging, uh, you know, DeFi and all these other products in a very seamless way across different chains. Of course, still offering its Oracle service, which is a very, very big aspect of Chainlink, how it originated with things and a whole bunch of other projects, VRFs and all the rest of it, right, for gaming. So verifiable random functions. Basically takes an input, scrambles it up and puts a random output out there essentially, right? Good for casinos and stuff like that. So this is obviously fantastic, but of course it's got quite a few competitors because now we're dealing with Web2 and Web3, as well. So actually, if we come look over here, Chainlink now hits both of these targets, but it's actually a very good thing because if you look at Web2, Web2 cryptocurrency projects aren't going to do well this bull run, I believe, like Quant. Web3 coins like Wormhole will. This is just focusing on CCIP or interoperability in this case. However, of course, Chainlink beats them both out because of what it's currently doing. We'll look at some of these upgrades here in a second, right? So it's focused on both. These guys are focused single handedly on one side or the other. It's got more obvious narratives. These two have less obvious narratives, or in the case of Wormhole, a single narrative being interoperability, right? Reacts from tokenization news, we'll look at this in a second, and also has great tokenomics. The FDV meme, all these influencers are pushing, you know, it's got to have good FDV, FDV. It doesn't need good FDV to do well, but of course, Chainlink does tick that box as well, so just even more in its core. Now, I want to play a very quick clip here before moving into the news from Sergey, the... Uh, founder and co-creator of Chainlink. I'm sure many of you have heard of the BlackRock work where Biddle was put on a public chain. So this barrier is starting to come down very gradually. And once it comes down, what you'll have is a single global internet of contracts where everything is interconnected across DeFi startups, traditional fintechs, and traditional TradFi institutional players. And it'd be just like the internet. The internet is interconnected through a set of protocols like TCP IP. And in the internet of contracts, we are working towards that being interconnected over CCIP, which is the cross-chain interoperability protocol. 
and for that to be interconnected in a way where value and data can be tightly coupled, can be highly connected so that everyone can manage risk, everyone can understand what's going on, and the value and data can move together across all of these different chains. So you heard it here first. Pretty much what I explained earlier on uh, is trying to be basically the new age of the internet protocol, but this time rather than spreading information or data, like with YouTube, for example, of course, we can do things like transact tokens, transact actual real value, which is amazing. Now, this is some big news. This validates a lot with Chainlink. So basically, we look at a project, right? You know, trying to figure out, okay, is this coin going to react well in its narrative? AKA, is it unique enough? Does it have a unique enough meme or unique selling point for when money goes into that area like tokenization are people going to go hmm i better buy Chainlink because Chainlink's dealing with tokenization well we have confirmation of this it soared 16 percent after larry fink had the whole tokenization push back in january which was fantastic okay that obviously uh, proved that it does react very well to tokenization sort of a newer narrative it's now thrust itself into which is fantastic I'll be quite quick here because there's a lot to cover and time is running out. Signum Air Fidelity actually partnered with Chainlink to provide NAV data on chain. So you guys can go ahead and read this report. I might leave the link for it down below. Either way, this is some very big stuff. They're dealing with big, big players in the space of NAV, right? Now, we also probably have, in my opinion, bigger news. It worked with Swift. This was some older news right back in August of last year, but it's impressive nonetheless, right? Swift today released results from a new series of experiments that show its infrastructure can seamlessly facilitate the transfer of tokenized value across multiple public, which is crypto basically, and private blockchains, so more so like enterprise private locked off networks. While tokenization is in its infancy, 97% of institutional investors believe it will revolutionize asset management and be a positive force in the industry. So in my opinion, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I think with the big chief over there, Larry Fink, pushing it so hard now, it's likely going to be sped up quite a bit. Working with more than a dozen major financial institutions and market infrastructure and Chainlink, a leading Web3 service platform, Swift successfully demonstrated that it can provide a, get this, single point of access to multiple networks using existing secure infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so Chainlink is that single point of entry. And that's what they're talking about here with this amazing sort of collaboration they tried and tested. So it works and they're happy with Chainlink as that single point of entry into crypto and to and from private networks as well. ANZ, Australia's big four bank, right, actually use CCIP to test cross-chain transactions with their ADC stablecoin, right? The development showcased the bank's capability to transfer funds across both open and private blockchain networks. Again, open and private. They're really, truly testing this in the same way a lot of the quant folks were saying quant was pretty much only focusing on itself. So these guys are doing not just private networks, but also crypto as well. Of course, quant is as well, but these guys have a much better marketing campaign, I believe, for this cycle. So this uh, news report over here as well, tailing complete pilots to accelerate fund tokenization with JP Morgan, Templeton, and BNY Mellon. So they didn't really gain that much when this came out, but guys, it's going to pop. It's going to be caught on to at some point. This is huge stuff, similar to ANZ, of course. They actually did a very, very similar thing down here with more banks that I didn't even mention, right? Citigroup and so on. So uh, yeah, they're doing some big stuff. Also, they actually opened up their CCIP to all developers in crypto. So it was closed off for testing for quite a while. You had to request access to be able to develop on CCIP. But now, as of somewhat recently, April 24, it's now open to anyone. Matter of fact, here's the fees generated. This year, it's about $700,000 already worth of fees. And I believe as the bull run kicks up, so obviously we're not looking too hot right now because the market hasn't been too hot. Well, actually, it kind of has been really right. But in this case, uh, when we begin picking up demand, it should begin picking up more and more fees and more developers will begin using it, right? As we can see, 11.2 million average interactions. It's incredible. Of course, I don't have to try to tell you guys why Chainlink is very impressive. I think it'll do a lot more multiples than what many people expect. Now, let's finish up here with ICP. And I want to start off with actually giving you a little quick video from Dominic, the founder of ICP and Definity, the, the uh, foundation behind ICP. And I actually agree with him on this. It's a little bit confrontational, but I think nonetheless, people need to hear this. Pew really did a survey of, of the public that invests in blockchain. You know, I'll guarantee you that most of them are very confused and they have no idea um, uh, of the difference between, you know, a, a blockchain that's actually running uh, a AI models on the chain of smart contracts and some of these projects just making a whole load of noise about, you know, being the blockchain for AI or the token for AI. 
Like if an institution invests in something that claims to be doing AI on the blockchain and it's not, well, maybe then eventually, you know, people will stop, um, you know, uh, over over hyping that 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 projects and misleading people. He's one hundred percent right, but people don't want to hear this. A lot of your projects that you've likely invested in are vaporware. They slap the AI title on it. They say we're a layer one. There's no actual use for any of it. They might have three nodes. They say they have a thousand nodes. I mean, it's very very wishy washy and shady because it is the wild west. But you have to understand. He is saying this not because he is saying this because he's doing this. He's saying this because ICP is the complete opposite. It's the complete package, right? This was a recent interview over here. Um, he did with one of his employees, right, talking about AI on the ICP network. And I want to play this quick clip because it will lead into something else in a minute. Uh, you said that you don't feel like tokens for AI and deep in networks and GPUs, et cetera, will be huge. Why? Well, look, start, starting with, with tokens for AI... Um, you know, you can see there are hundreds of them, uh, you know, on coin market cap. And, you know, we've dug in because we want to understand the space. Um, my my general impression personally is that, that a lot of them are just, you know, peddling sort of snake oil narratives um, in order to collect, you know, money, sell tokens essentially to, to DGENs who don't have the full picture. So there you have it. And he goes on to say specifically, you know, AI deep in projects that, uh, some marketplaces, if you will. I mean, they honestly just borrow each other's GPU power. But I'll talk more about that momentarily here, but this is one massive upgrade they have had recently, right? Chain Fusion Day. They've spoken about one of their products, one of their key products here called Chain Key Cryptography, or in this case, Chain Fusion, in which they're able to allow developers to build on uh, an integral infrastructure, kind of like CCIP with Chainlink there, and connect with many different networks, but do this in a way we really haven't seen before, essentially allowing these guys to actually transfer the native tokens as if they were on the actual network itself. This is very unique and different, and this, if you don't really know, right, different networks have to use wrapped tokens, which fragments liquidity, which is a very annoying thing to deal with because you have a million liquidity pools and you might do a swap that's very highly liquid on one network and a swap on another network. And because we're dealing with a wrap token now, it might be highly illiquid, which means you suffer a lot of slippage, right? Which means you lose some of your token value, which is unfortunate. This is a bit different. There's a whole bunch of stuff to go into. I'm conscious I'm running out of time here. So I do want to say they have a lot of networks already connected. If you guys want a deeper breakdown on uh, chain fusion let me know because i can do a deeper dive into this in an individual icp video but it very much reminds me of ccip not to keep mentioning chain link here back when it first launched no one gave a crap about it right didn't do anything for the price and then the market latched onto ccip once we had the initial surge back in october as a, like oh my gosh this is amazing but actually the event itself was very boring so in this case a chain fusion isn't new, but they're pushing it. And I believe that, of course, it's for good reason. They've got some great offerings for developers to, to make some really cool applications in a multi-chain space, right? Now, of course, this same interview that I just showed you moments before, Blockchain Pill did speak about this idea that Dominic actually, again, the Dominic the founder, uh, spoke about there being some massive upgrade in September. So a few weeks or a month away. And his deduction, and I actually agree with this, might be that a major sort of company in the real world could be using uh, ICP for Utopia. Utopia in this case, of course, is their sovereign cloud network where we're getting away from the public blockchain now and they're able to leverage ICP's technology off-chain in their own private cloud, if you will, kind of like their own private Google cloud or you know Apple cloud if you use Apple, right? And uh, in this case, also connect to the public ICP network, which would be good for ICP's price. So that's what he's expecting. I actually would say that would be a very good thing. And again, considering Dominic said it's going to be a huge update, I hope it's that as well. Or something else that's also going to cause some positive price pressure for ICP, right? ICP technology provides, without a doubt, the most advanced next generation compute platform in existence today. It was developed through a massive multi-year R&D effort that has placed it years ahead of its time. Utopias will also host tamper-proof and unstoppable vertical AI models, directly addressing the pressing emerging need to run AI models in a tamper-proof and resilient way. So obviously, <laughs> AI, whatever you feed it, it's going to use to spit the answer out. Obviously, there's a big need for this right now, hence why we have ASI, now a new token in the crypto space. Guys, it's very important that AI will transform the world here 
and AI can be used very maliciously if you fear the wrong things and if it's able to be tampered with at any point in time. Someone can just go in there, feed it something new, and all of a sudden it's going to cause some problems. So hosting it on a, you know ICP, for example, the only network that's actually able to completely host AI on a decentralized network as of right now uh, I think it's pretty important, okay? So finally here, ICP with the Utopia news, possibly anyway, um, and some of the other things they're doing as well, looking to branch out of just the ICP ecosystem. They're looking to now make their market web too. So much slower growth in this bull run, but much greater longer term impact, okay? Of course, Web3, this is why if we focus on Web3 coins on this channel, much faster gains, potentially less impactful over time though. And here's your reasons why, okay? So Interestingly, though, ICP hasn't had much interactions. I don't know why in the last six months. Only uh, 178,000 per day. I think this is a massive mistake because I'm the number one creator. And I'll tell you right now, Dominic gets way more interactions than I do. And he's not even on the top five list. So there's something that's not picking up here. And if we go back a bit further, I'm pretty sure it had much more impressive numbers over a year ago. So it's not pulling in, or at least it's not showing now anyway but it's not pulling in some information. So I think ICP probably would be up there with uh, with Render, if not slightly higher than Render in the multiple million dollar interactions, because I almost am certain it was in the past. So let's get to the part where you're all waiting for, right? What's the very end secret that you all need to really know, right? What do you need to know as a holder? And guys, look, guess what? With all this amazing news, it is making sure you get out at a reasonable price. With these coins, you don't want to be selling them at high prices. Do not try to sell any coin, no matter how high fee it might be, right? How amazing it might sound to you. Don't let that greed kick in and sell at ridiculously high prices. So in this example, I've pulled these three coins in, spending about a thousand dollars today, right? A nice diversified portfolio you can see here, split 33% each way. And we're gonna look to just simply get out at realistic levels. I deem these realistic in my personal opinion, Chainlink at hundred bucks, render at 70 and ICP at 105. You might not deem them, this is not financial advice. This is what I'm going off. If you want my actual price predictions, guys, go to the private community. It's, it's all in there, okay? So here's what I would deem realistic sell levels and in quantities at the target of these prices. So 70 bucks over here. We actually just miss out at these percentages sold for render. And I actually think we miss out of them as well for Chainlink, right? But it's the revenue. We're pretty much getting you know, a few hundred dollars less than what we need to, which is fine in most cases, okay? It's much better to be safe I get a little bit less money, in this case, you know, 600 bucks less or 700 bucks less than it is to try to add more risk. So these are our intended targets. You can see here for RCP, for example, you can just screenshot these guys, by the way. These are what I would personally go for at these price targets, right? To be much safer on the bottom side, selling at 60 bucks, jumping up 20 bucks, jumping up 10 bucks, five bucks, five bucks, $1.50 and $1.50. So you really want to make sure that when you're selling these coins, guys, again, realistic levels to start off with. Don't try to sell ICP at a thousand bucks, for goodness sake. You won't be very happy in the next one and a half years. But you can see here we're staggering these very, very low to begin with. And we're jumping up at larger, uh, smaller increments as we go on, all right? Until we hit the intended price target, in this case, 105 bucks for ICP, and then we very barely stagger. It's much better to sell more. You can see in yellow here to sell more at these higher levels that are lower and closer and tighter to the actual intended exit price than it is to set 100 different levels above the intended price because you'll still sell more percentage above the level if you increase the numbers. Because if you increase the number of levels you have, you're still adding risk to those levels, all right? So be very, very cautious of that. So yes, this is what I was trying to say. With all this bullish news, and yes, there is definite guarantees of bullishness to come in this cycle for these three coins, you want to be realistic. And these are the sell prices I would personally look for and these sell levels. I think things might change. If you're watching this in 12 more months, uh, Render might have had a really bad announcement or so on and so forth. And in that case, things can change, but I would never push these levels up. I would only ever come down even in a bullish case. So guys, that will do it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed and most importantly, learned something useful today, okay? If you have, drop down there and hit the like button and of course, subscribe and I will see you tomorrow. Take care, bye.